Hey everyone, in this tutorial we're going to take a look at how you can use motions and accessories together in combination within iClone 8.5. Previous versions of iClone required a significant amount of editing to get your motions to match correctly with the associated accessories. This would require a combination of techniques like pose refinement, reach targets, and accessory positioning to name a few. However, with the new 8.5 update, there are now preset templates available that you can apply with a single click speeding up your production time significantly. Here you can see an example of a skateboard motion perfectly aligned with Kevin here without the need for any refinement whatsoever. These new templates can be applied to any Reillusion character rig as well. You'll find them in the Motion Plus category under Animation in your Content Manager. In this case, we're going to demonstrate the embedded skateboard pack in which you'll find a number of animation clips as well as the target accessories and associated materials for customization. This particular motion can be combined with a connected accessory. Simply click and drag the desired motion to any Reillusion character and you'll see that the accessory will also be applied and positioned accordingly. Not only that, when we play back, you can see that the motion is auto-retargeted perfectly according to each character's bone scale, meaning that you can apply the same motion to characters of varying proportions without the need for any adjustment. You can also easily apply variants of the associated accessory quickly by right-clicking and dragging your motion. This will open up a Motion Plus option window where you can assign the desired mesh and material from their respective drop-down menus. You can conveniently mouse over each option in these menus to get a larger thumbnail preview of each mesh. Let's try again by assigning a motion to the kid here only this time we're going to select a different material. Again, you can preview each one with a mouse over before applying. You can also click and drag any associated material directly to the viewport at any time. Here I'm simply right clicking and dragging a different material to our female character's board to change its appearance mid-flight. The same can be done with the associated meshes. Again, be sure to right-click and drag to the existing accessory mesh to replace it. Be aware that this will only work for associated meshes that are linked to the template motion, so don't try to bring in a huge surfboard here, or you'll have some trouble on your hands, not to mention a ruined surfboard. Okay, let's look at a couple of examples of how we can customize these accessory linked motions next. Let's start off with blending two of them together. I'll apply our first kickflip motion here at the beginning of our timeline, then move the playhead further down and apply a completely different trick. Next I'm going to cut out the lead time of the second clip before the actual trick, so the two are closer together by breaking the clip and deleting the first part. However, if we move the clips together to blend them, you'll notice that the speed is inconsistent. This is because these clips are both root motions meaning that your character's root position will change throughout the duration of the clip, even though you haven't moved its transform position on the timeline. In a situation like this, in order to blend them together properly, we need to right-click on the second clip, then select Align Root. This will snap the character's root at the beginning of the second clip to where he ends up at the end of the first clip. However, you'll notice that as often happens in these cases, there is now a sudden snap in his pose. This can be refined by dragging the clips together and adjusting the transition area to get an ideal blend. For more details on this, please refer to our dedicated motion clip blending tutorial. For our next trick, let's have our character change direction. I'm going to change the direction during the second clip, so I'll select that and open up Motion Direction Control. You'll see the direction of the second clip highlighted and I can use the rotation gizmo to change the trajectory. Now when we play back, you'll see that although the gizmos are at a sharp angle, the trajectory of the two is blended to create a natural transition. Now some motions may not have ideal blending results due to the position of the linked accessory. In this case, our first motion has the board flipping its direction 180 degrees during the clip. While the second is a simple gliding motion, 
where the board is facing the normal direction. When we try to blend these two clips, what will happen is that the accessory will create its own transition, which in this case looks very strange as it slides unnaturally. In this case, we need to do some manual editing using the Edit Animation Layer tool. But first, let's cut the second clip and remove the area at the beginning where our character's left foot is planted on the ground. This will make it easier to create a smooth transition between the last pose of the first clip, which has both feet planted in relatively the same position on the board. However, when we blend the clips, you'll notice that the board is still rotating. To fix this, I need to go to the first frame of the second clip and manually adjust the board's rotation using the Edit Animation Layer tool. When I do this and blend the clips now, we'll see the board maintain its rotation due to our manual adjustment. Finally, let's look at how we can send our character along a predetermined path using the Path tool. First, we need to apply a motion to our character. It doesn't matter where he is at this point because we're going to attach him to a path. To do so, make sure that you're at the first frame of your project, then use the eyedropper tool in the Attributes tab of the Modify panel and choose your path. When constrained to a path, the path will override the root motion change, so our character will remain stationary. To get your character to follow the path, set the path position slider at frame 1 to 0%. Then move your timeline playhead to the desired frame and move the same slider to 100%. This will move your character along the path, but its rotation still needs to be refined. You can try to fix this by changing the position of the final path point, but this is not recommended and normally you want to keep your path fixed. So with our character selected, let's go back to the path section of the attributes tab and click on follow path. You can press the W hotkey twice to display the local axis for your character. We want the leading direction to be the opposite of the green Y axis, so let's choose negative Y from the follow dropdown, which will snap our character and accessory into the proper position. To adjust the timing of your character's speed along the path, select it and edit the beginning and end points to change the speed progression. This is a good way to tweak moving motions to avoid the look of sliding or unnatural movement pace. Finally, you can use the Edit Motion Layer tool to set keys and change your character's pose to add further dynamic detail to the motion to make it appear more energetic. Please check out our dedicated tutorial for more info on the Edit Motion Layer tool for motion modification. That's it for this tutorial guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.